folks, welcome back to ASEAN News, and here is the latest updated with me, Vanessa. Japanese Prime Minister meet Polish Prime Minister talks on humanitarian aid. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki welcomed the Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi in Warsaw. The Japanese government has announced it will bring Ukrainian refugees from Poland to Japan with a government plane leaving later. Officials said application would initially be limited to relatives and friends of the roughly 1,900 Ukrainians already in Japan. Austin welcomes Singapore's Prime Minister to the Pentagon. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lois Austin welcomed Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong to the Pentagon a day ahead of Lee's meeting with President Joe Biden. The White House said during the visit, Biden will review efforts to ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific and discuss the war in Ukraine. And add more to that, Biden looked forward to deepening cooperation on issues including upholding freedom of the seas, supply chains resiliency, the crisis in Myanmar, and fighting climate change. Indonesian Muslims begin hold tarawih prayers before Ramadan. Beginning of Ramadan, Indonesian Muslims gathered for Tarawih prayers at the Grand Mosque of Istiqlal in Indonesia, capital of Jakarta. For the past two Ramadans, the faithful in Indonesia will not be able to practice mass prayers due to COVID-19 restrictions. Now the Indonesian government relaxed its restrictions as infections and death rates decline. Kalau saya uh, pertama bersyukur ya karena mis The start of Ramadan, during which observers abstain from food and drink from dawn until sunset, can fall on different dates due to differences in opinion after the sighting of the new moon. And the different interpretations of the calendar and religious opinions can lead to regional disagreements over the exact timing of the beginning of the month. As they head into Ramadan, many are worried over rocketing domestic prices, uncertain international conditions, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. South Korea Handuk So tapped to return as Prime Minister. The Transition Committee of South Korea's president elected. Yoon Suk Yeol named Han Duk So become Prime Minister in the new administration, restoring him to a role he last held more than a decade ago. The 72-year-old Han has expertise in economy, trade and public affairs and was Prime Minister during the Roh Moo Hyun administration. He spent more than 40 years in the public sector, including the Customs Agency, Trade Ministry and Finance Ministry. He also served as an ambassador to the United States. Han said the economy was struggling amid heightened economic and geopolitical risks as he listed for main tasks to be addressed, managing foreign and defense policies, achieving fiscal soundness while keeping a healthy current account surplus and raising national productivity. The prime minister in South Korea, unlike some others, is appointed by the president rather than being elected and must be approved by parliament. Okay. Japanese said good to host more refugees when Tokyo flies 20 Ukrainian refugees. Japan flew in 20 Ukrainian refugees to Tokyo in high profile show of support for the international efforts to help Ukraine, a rare step by a country that has long been reluctant to take in foreigners. 
during a trip to Poland, the 20 refugees, aged ranging from 6 to 66 years old, were seen arriving at Tokyo International Airport on a special government plane that was arranged by Japan's foreign minister. The 20 joined about 400 other Ukrainian refugees already in Japan, most of them having entered a 90-day visa, which they can convert to a special one-year working visa. Officials have not said if Japan will lay on more special flights on how many refugees might be allowed. Japanese resident Hironori Murakami said he strongly support the government gesture and hope that Japan will open its doors to more refugees from Ukraine. Ethnically, homogeneous Japan has long been wary of foreign migrants despite an aging population and a chronic labor shortage, but opinion polls show a vast majority of Japanese support giving sanctuary to Ukrainians in 2020 for humanitarian reasons about 1% of total applications, the world's third largest economy it accepted just 47 refugees and admitted 44 others. Foreign Minister said China sincerely wants peace in Ukraine. State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi said China hopes Russia and Ukraine will stick to peace talks until a ceasefire agreement is reached and the only thing that China wants is peace in Ukraine. Wang made the remarks during a phone conversation with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba. Kuleba briefed Wang on the Russia-Ukraine situation, China's great country which advocates the five principles of peaceful coexistence and plays a key and active role in safeguarding peace. He added that Ukraine wishes to maintain communication with China and hopes that China will continue to play an important role in achieving a ceasefire in his country. Wang expressed appreciation for the efforts of Ukrainian government and all sectors of society in assisting the safe evacuation of Chinese citizens from Ukraine, stressing that Chinese leaders and Chinese government highly value the safety of every overseas Chinese citizen. He said he hopes Ukraine will continue to take active and effective measures to ensure the safety of Chinese citizens remaining in the country. Noting Chinese stance on Ukraine issue as promoting dialogue and peace talks, and Wang said Chinese President Xi Jinping has comprehensively expounded China's position on multiple occasions, which serves as an important guidance to address the current challenges. It is China's historical and cultural tradition, as well as its consistent foreign policy, to safeguard peace and oppose war. On the Ukrainian issue, China does not seek geopolitical interest, nor will it watch the event from a safe distance while sitting idle or add fuel to the fire. China welcomes peace talks between Russia and Ukraine, adding more that, no matter how difficult the talks would be and what differences they would have, the general direction of peace talks should be held until a ceasefire and eventual peace are achieved. China believes that the principle of indivisible security should be adhered to and a balanced, effective and sustainable European security should be built upon dialogue on an equal footing. On its objective and impartial position, China is willing to continue to play a constructive role in its own way. Kuleba said he agrees with China's views and expressed appreciation for China's humanitarian assistance. He said Ukraine is dedicated to peace talks with Russia to find a lasting solution and the country is willing to become the gate of Europe. Wong said he hopes this gate will lead to peace in Europe, development in Ukraine, and cooperation between China and Europe. And that's the wrap up for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice weekend.